I read a quote somewhere, you probably know the quote, uh, the real quote, something about if you master your breath, you have the strength of 10 tigers or something like that. Is that the quote? Have you heard that before? I'm not sure, but that sounds- There's I, some I, like Tao quote that's like, you ma learn to master your breath, you have the strength of 10 tigers. It's true. Crazy, right? It's, it's real. Well, it's, it, why is breathing so important in our, not a, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs our here, but in our existence, yes, in our lives. I, I mean, you know, and, and I've been fortunate to be exposed to a couple different forms of breathing. And uh -huh. of course, you know, when you're in the ocean or in yeah. the water, breath is an ever important yeah, thing yeah, yeah. because you're, you know, your relationship with drowning. But, uh, you know, lately I've been kind of studying under this guy, Wim Hof, who does all this uh, breath training. But w the, the thing that you realize is that, that your spirit or your soul is connected to your breath. Mm. And that when, that when you, you know, like when a baby takes its first breath is when it, the spirit comes into huh. the body, just like when the breath stops, so does the spirit leave. Wow. So if you really want to get into like a kind of a little bit, you know, deeper sure. conversation, it's a connection to your soul or your yeah. spirit. It's a, you have a, and, and then, and then it's, you know, obviously uh, <clears throat> mandatory for life. I mean, <laughs> exactly. breath is the way we get oxygen. Yeah. Oxygen is essential for living. So mm -hmm. it's all about breathing at the end. And then, and then we know through, you know, cardiovascular activities and any kind of exertion. It's all about breathing. I mean, yeah. breathing is, is your fuel. That's your energy. That's your power. Uh, when you're not, you know, eating food and digesting and drinking water, but you know, oxygen is the, is the thing that ultimately fires every cell in your body. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that's your, you know, so have you been practicing breathing strategies or techniques or working on your breath for, since you've been uh, surfing and swimming in the ocean for your whole life, have you been doing that? Or is it more in the last year you said you started to dive in and really practice it now? Well, the, it's been the last year or uh, last year or so that I've really focused on isolation of the breath. I've been exposed to some yoga mm -hmm. breathing and some yeah. types of yoga breathing over the years. Um, but I haven't been so uh, disciplined and consistent with it, like I have been the last year and a half or two. And, and so, you know, that's, but, I, but I, I indirectly have been doing it anyway. Sure. Because first of all, when you, you swim. You have to when you're swimming. Swimming's yeah. a breathing rhythm. Yeah. Being in the water, you always have to hold your breath. Uh, you know, so you get, so you have a relationship with your breath. If you do any kind of diving or free diving, I mean, you already have a, a established a, 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 a deeper relationship yes. than <clears throat> the normal person. people. Yeah. Yeah. Because normally people are <clears throat> they're They don't even think about breathing. They're yeah. not even, you know, they're not even yeah. conscious. And if of you it. want to become a better swimmer or better in the water, whatever sport you're doing, you have to be, master your breath at some level. Absolutely. So I mean, you're, you're getting yeah. better just by practicing it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a byproduct of your of you doing it without even being conscious of it, and 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 then you know and then when you do some heavy you know circuits or 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 other types of, of you know intense training, mm. you know you know what the breath is all about. I mean, right. usually the breath is what what dictates the failure. Mm. At a certain point, when you're out of breath and you're behind, you know you look at any endurance athlete or any fighter. You know, as soon as they start mouth breathing and uh, uh, they like, they all, oh, everybody will say, they're, oh, they're finished. Yeah, their body can't they're, keep they're, up. Yeah, they're done. Yeah. They're going to say they're done. So what have you learned about yourself in the last two years after essentially 40 years of breathing strategies and mastering your breath now into actually diving into these new strategies? What's opened up for you? What's been available for your body, your mind, your relationships, your health, your businesses when mastering in this new way of breathing? I think it just, I think it, it definitely uh, brings a certain amount of control mm -hmm. over your, over your system that you didn't have. Yet you, you have a sensitivity to. You have more control now in these last two years sure. than you did for, for sure. 40 prior years for sure. studying this? For sure. Wow. For sure. Just, just because of the, well, the sequencing of breathing and the way, uh, the way the body reacts to it. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, when you get into, it's like any, uh, any form of training, you know, you, you, when you put stress on the system, then the system adapts. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's how our, that's how it works. I mean, evolution right. is because there's stress on a situation. So there's a, there's an adaptation and then we evolve and, 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 uh, you know, so by, but when you start stressing the body through the breathing, then it adapts and becomes more efficient mm. and you start to get control of you. You find that you can 
you know, you can breathe yourself into real calmness. Yeah. You can find, you can use the energy to bring your energy up and make you more, you know, more, uh, aggressive or more powerful you can control your lactic acid you know mm -hmm. threshold i mean it just it seems somewhat uh you know boundless yeah you know? it's crazy i mean i'll just reiterate what happened for those that uh, obviously weren't here there's probably 10 of us outside i walked in you guys were already doing the breathing sure and then you we, we took us outside uh on your your pool deck and we started breathing and within about 45 seconds, I thought I was going to pass out. You're like, okay, you're going to breathe in a certain way. And I'll have you demonstrate this for a second. Sure. You're going to breathe in a certain way yeah. and you don't want to hyperventilate, yeah. but close to it. Yeah. And I remember my whole body was like tingling. We're laying on our backs yeah. and my whole body was tingling. I was, I was like, I might pass out if I push this Yeah. because I was yeah. dizzy. I was lightheaded. I was like, it's early morning here. Yeah. I'm like, where am I? Up in Malibu. For sure. And it was intense. And we did it for, I was like, yeah, okay, maybe this is like a 10, 15 minute thing, warm up yeah, yeah. for the real workout. Yeah. But we did it over an hour, it felt like, for sure. of breathing. For sure. It was one of the most intense things I've ever done, one of the most intense workouts. And I played, uh, you know, high level sports and three different sports. Absolutely. It was insane. But that's, I, I guess that's really the point. The point is, is that you can, you know, you can just be not moving mm -hmm. and put the system through an intensity Stressing. that is more intense than moving all the parts. Uh -huh. and, 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 and I think that's, again, part of the mastery of it. Like when yeah. you know, you know, because we, uh, you know, we're so trained in, in, to believe that, that working out is, is something that, you know, you bang iron and yeah. you run and you bang and you, and it's all this, this hammering. And then we have to feel sore and feel like someone punched you to feel like that was a good workout. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a good, oh yeah, me too. You know, can you walk? Oh, I can't walk. I can't walk either. You know, like that. And that was, and, and we considered that that to be good yeah. training. When you can go into a situation where you're, you're almost sedentary, you're laying there, uh, you know, and then <laughs> maybe, we do, and, then, yeah, and then maybe we make you do a couple of push ups, and then yeah. you just go to a whole nother yeah. place. Uh, y you know, it, it just, it, 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 it kind of shines a light on really what is training. And what mm. is working out and what is being in shape and what is, you know, all of that, that we, that we, we have, you know, we try to box up, we try yeah. to package and say, well, this is it. And, and we have a pretty good, you know, mindset about what we think it is. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden something like that comes along and you're like, well, actually we don't know what it is. And, but they really feed each other. Those, yeah. those systems are all, you know, they're all feeding each other. You don't, your body doesn't really know the difference. If you can impl implement strict breathing it doesn't know the difference between that and you running and forcing your body to breathe hard at the end your body's like okay well i need oxygen mm -hmm. for whatever reason it is either because i don't have it or because i'm i'm burning it off or but it, at the end it's, it needs it it needs it doesn't doesn't need to know why mm -hmm. and so then you have to get it how do i get it i got to do it through the breathing and so you can if you're if you're disciplined i mean we learned because we were doing these altitude masks training yes. so we have these special yes. masks training masks yep. but they weren't not the restriction mask but an actual mask that simulates okay. altitude sure and you put these resistors on it and it's a, a process that they developed for russian uh fighter jet pilots okay. before they had pressurized cabins they'd send these guys up and they'd fly up to wow. you know fifteen thousand feet and all of a sudden they just burrow in and they're like well what's wrong <laughs> well they're not acclimated to yeah. the altitude so how do we acclimate them how do we acclimate thousands of them in a short period of time? And so they developed this mask system with these restrictors. And, uh, and what you do is you wear an, an oximeter that tells, your, tells you where your blood levels are. Mm. So uh, you, you, you can see where the blood level is and you're, you're supposed to get your blood level down to like 70% oxygen and you stay there for three minutes and then you come back out. It takes three minutes to get there and you do that six times and then you do that once a day and then within a couple months you can build up to it and yeah, right yeah. to 20,000 feet and you're yeah. like no problem you're fine but you realize that we can implement that same thing just by controlling your breathing and by restricting it and you don't even need you don't even need this thing but it takes right. the discipline and it takes the time yeah it took you know we yeah. did an hour of yeah, it yeah, it was yeah. like yeah yeah the interesting thing was i was doing it and i realized that i wasn't focused on anything else in my life I wasn't, uh, you know, it came up in a couple moments. I was like, oh, what about that thing that I was stressed about yesterday and about this relationship issue I have and about my business? But then it was like, you're going through so much in your body. You have to be in the moment present of your breath in the moment. that you can't stress about something else, which was so fast. I was like, wow, I just did an hour of meditation, essentially. Meditation. It's, and it's actually, uh, it and, then, and, and that's the whole thing with, you know, when, when, uh, 
a lot of Wim's training, the Iceman's training has to do with, and, and this is, you know, because I've been exposed to different forms of uh -huh. meditation, this is a mechanical meditation system yeah. where you, you can actually implement a, a, a process to, to, to meditate, not, yeah. not an ethereal process, yeah. not something where you have to kind of, you know, where, where you get to a Swami and he tells you to go to this <laughs> thing. And, you know, and from, from my scientific practical mindset where I come from, it doesn't work. You yeah. got, I just, I can't get there. It's yeah. like, and I well, you know, transcendental and I'm like, okay, yeah, well, that's great. But when you tell me breathe this many times, exhale, hold, do, you know, do, you know, breathe again, exhale, hold, you're like going to see this, mentality. you're going to yeah. feel this athlete. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm coming from, you know, I'm coming from math. I'm coming <laughs> from practical, like, yes. you know, this does that, that does this, uh, you know, I need that. I can't yeah. be, it can't be too ethereal for me. Sure. Some people actually excel in the ethereal, but I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not, that's not the way my mind works. You need to works. be in your body more. That's right. Yeah. And this, and this is a way to, that, that it's allowed me to, to do some meditation that, First of all, I did, didn't know it was possible. And I'm like, wow, that's what they're talking about when the guy, you know, I've, I've probably experienced some things that it takes somebody, you know, 10 or 15 years or more mm. to, to, from being taught by a guy in Tibet to yeah. even get near. But you're getting and, into it in three to six months that's by right. practicing that's it right. and being in your body, that's right. not just being in your head. No. And well, the presence, like you said, yeah. all of a sudden you're in a spot where there, you aren't thinking about any. There's nothing else. You it, can't. You can't. There's you nothing. Can't. It won't allow you. Like there were a couple moments yeah. I think when we were just yeah. relaxing, yeah. you know, for like ten seconds. Yeah. So I was like, you'll drift for a second. <laughs> yeah. And we'll just bring you. And right then you're back. like, okay, here's the yeah. breathing exercise. Yeah. So if you can, let's maybe do like fifteen to twenty seconds of what someone could practice at home in a safe environment. Yeah. Because you were pushing us pretty hard, and maybe yeah. you weren't, but for me as a yeah. newbie, I was like, "Oh, this is the real deal." Yeah. Well, you need to go into it slowly. I mean, yeah. you know, you can go online and get a course from Wim. Like uh -huh. he has an incredible online program. You know, basically, the the foundation of it really has to do with a with a. And I, I call it a circle breath, and I don't even, you know, I, I'm an amateur, mm -hmm. but I know I know that the that. that you know, I look at it as a circle breath in the sense of that the in and the out are similar, yeah. and then it's really um, it's a rhythm, and it's almost like hyperventilation, but not that because hyperventilation takes a lot of energy, and you're short breathing. So, and what so does hyperventilation look like? If you can hyper, just, hyperventilation if you can is more like <laughs> like that, where you start to where you'll get you were not really getting, you're kind of, you can get a CO2 buildup, which yeah. happens, which make you you know, I mean, you can pass out doing any kind of breathing, <laughs> you know, or lack thereof. Yeah. But um, this breathing is more like, <sighs> like if you think about pumping something mm -hmm. up, like how you pump a raft up or how you, or you yeah. blow a balloon up, you know, uh -huh. you blow a balloon up like. <sighs> right. So you in that kind of a rhythm and, and it really is about oxygenation, right? It's about getting oxygen into the system in a, in a, in a very efficient way and, and full saturation. And then from there, and you'll get, you know, you'll have all these, you know, sensations. You, like you said, you feel your body tingle. You'll have weird things on your lips, it your was, ears. I was getting lightheaded. I was, I thought I was going to pass totally, out. But those are totally, those are totally normal, yeah. normal things. So what's the purpose of oxygen, oxygenating your body? What's that purpose? What's that do for the body once it's complete? Well, I mean, ultimately it, it definitely will allow you to work harder, you know, so that if you implement like, like for example, you can do, you know, when in Wim's program, you do these push ups and you do them just with normal breathing. Mm -hmm. And then he has you sit there and then you oxygenate your system and you, exhale and hold your breath and do push-ups and you do more push-ups on an exhale breath hold than you did while you were breathing. breathing. Wait, so you could do more push-ups completely letting go and then holding it, not taking a breath in and pushing, you can do more push-ups push than more if you were breathing. Yes. How is that even possible? Doesn't because your muscles you, need the you, oxygen? They do, but, but the fact is, is that you've saturated your system with a volume of oxygen that, that you normally don't get when you just normal breathe and do an activity. And that's really what it's about, right? It's about you, you understanding that, that, that the oxygen that you store in your system is greater than the one you're getting. Yeah. And, and the, the, to get more, because also you have to remember it takes energy to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> so when you add an activity with breathing, 
then now it takes energy just to do the breathing and because our breathing isn't a very efficient we're not absorbing enough when you compound that with the amount of energy it takes to do the activity right, right. so yeah the, the breathing energy the energy it takes to do the activity and then you're and then you're and then you're behind and that's yeah. why you i mean ultimately the muscles don't fail because they're failing they're just not getting the oxygen Gosh, they need. i mean we were like th those of us who had shirts on you know we're dripping in sweat absolutely just breathing absolutely and it's not even that hot out right now. I know that. No, I know. It's all, it's counterintuitive. It's you look crazy. at it, you're like, oh yeah. And, and again, you know, to have the discipline to be able to do it and implement mm -hmm. an hour of breathing yeah. and realize it's, that you're really getting an incredible workout. Um, you know, it, it's, that's part of, that's part of the process. I yeah. think that's part of it is to teach you that, mm -hmm. that, and, and, you know, at a certain point, you know, it, you either have to be exposed to people that are doing it or you have to be at a maturity level to handle it because, mm -hmm. you know, our normal mindset, yeah. uh, right, you know, we right, just right. got to grind away at stuff. And, and it's because that's an, actually an easier way to approach things. Yeah. It's easier just to go, I'm going to get on my bike and I'm going to ride for, you know, two <laughs> hours right. straight. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab this weights and I'm just going to bang this weights or I'm going to sprint back and forth across this field. It's another thing to go, okay, I'm going to go lay down. It's more discipline to do what we did. Exactly. Which is the irony of it, right? It, it, it almost takes more discipline to do nothing than it does to do something. <laughs> but that's the But that's kind of the irony yeah. of the story in a way. It's interesting because I was so grateful that you were facilitating it for us because it was my first time. I don't know if there were other guys first time there. Uh, there yeah, a couple of the, a couple a couple of the boys. Guys. I think they've made, done it once or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was interesting because I was just uh, so, I was like, you know, do we... You made it so comfortable for us, yeah. at least for me. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, you know, it's yep. okay. You don't have to do the same pace as everyone else. Yeah. If you yeah. need to breathe, yeah. you can take a break. For sure. And I really appreciated how you were facilitating that. You know, you've become like a master of teaching it through doing it yourself, it sounds, it sounds like. Well, but also that's an that's a approach that I, I think that I've already always had. I think yeah. that, that that's a little bit how I work in my, and, and it's not something that people perceive of me because of what mm -hmm. I do. They think they're going to come and get hammered. Yeah. And, and that's not the way I approach things. I, um, have, have you read uh, Natural Born Heroes? Not yet. So Natural Born Heroes is a phenomenal book, but there's a big, you know, for me, it was, it was biblical because uh -huh. I, it was like a, of the philosophies of some of the guys in the book. Um, like the guys that are like a, a fitness natural that were all about training in nature but they're also all about no competition they were against competition because mm -hmm. they felt like that it it really was a restriction of uh. elevation of everybody's individual thing and 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 I because of my kind of lack of um because of my approach to competition that I I always feel like you know that that a lot of our evolution gets held back because we protect information because it's really about I'm going to try to beat you so if I know something that I think I can beat you with I won't tell you because then you'd have it too and I wouldn't be able to beat you. But if my objective is to make you be as good as you can be and I'm going to try to be as good as I can be, I will be like, you can't believe this. Try this. And so that's more how I yeah. approach things. And I think because of, especially like in big wave riding, when we've gone out and done the things we've done, that it has to do with the fact that we've done it with camaraderie. We've done it, done it with community and really the evolution of man. If you looked at why man survived was because of that, that that was the way we behaved. Mm -hmm. And it was only when we became so populated and so dense, did we create competition was more out of entertainment mm -hmm. that really competition was designed for entertainment. That's uh -huh. why we have competition. Wow. And at the end fighting and all these things that we have, they're not real fighting because real fighting doesn't last very long and it's very brutal Very and it brutal. would be it would never be uh, you wouldn't watch it on tv and it no. wouldn't be something that and you wouldn't just do it unless you were planning on actually killing a person yeah so you, you, and there's also this thing about the, the the you know that everybody being able to do it like true arts true fighting or true activities are meant that the a child should be able to do it and an old person should be able to do it mm. to make it something that really is for the species yeah so again it's these are all kind of deep ingrained ways of approaching it. But that's how I always, I never approach it like, hey, I'm going to hammer you. Now, if people come with the attitude like, hey, I can do this, then I might subject them to, to something. Um, but that will be only because that's what they're asking for. That, yeah. If somebody comes to me with in confidence, like, hey, I'm, I'm 
I'm going to give take myself to you, yeah, take, take care, care of me. <laughs> I'm, I'm always going to yeah, do yeah. that because w I think, that, I mean, it has to do with how I grew up and uh -huh. where we are in, in dealing with heavy situations. Yeah. The, the situations are heavy enough. I don't need to, we don't need to do anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. need to go and see how long you can hold your breath and yeah. because that, what's that going to, that doesn't do anything. And, and, and the bottom line is, is that you can destroy anybody. I, yeah. I don't care who you are. I can stack more weights. I can make you hold yeah. your breath hot longer. I can, I mean, it's like the stretch is deeper. The breath holdings, everything can always be, you know, you can always create something that's undoable. Yeah. It's more about creating something that's doable and how high far can we push that? How, mm. how, you know, and, and again, individually push your barrier, you know, yeah. and, and it's interesting because it's, that's total Wim Hof philosophy. That's total, that's total, uh, you know, natural born heroes philosophy. Like I see it and you start to see it, you know, and in a way, um, that's tough mutters philosophy, yeah. that Spartan race philosophy. I mean, these are all about getting the collective through and, and, and ultimately that cool. really is the most primal system because that's how we made it because mm -hmm. without each other, in our evolution, yeah. what match are we against? You know, right. all the the things in the in the yeah. you know in the world. We're no match. It's kind of like together. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, nobody wins unless we all win mentality. Absolutely. Well, that's right. Yeah. Nobody survives unless we all survive. Yeah. And so and so in in, in a way, I mean, it, it's it's uh, it doesn't mean I don't like healthy competition and <laughs> the fun of you know a little paddleboard race or some bocce yeah, ball yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. And you know, my competition concept really used to be more like or should i say is more related to like okay you know you you want to compete with me and you think you're you you're courageous well then we'll go to a big cliff and we'll just keep going up until one of us doesn't jump and whoever jumps higher is the winner so i always thought that that was a real defined through uh, courage courage yeah, wow for me i go that's so for me i go that's i go you, you want to really talk about you know, you want true competition. We go, th we have competition with courage. Mm. And that's, and I think that's part of my, the process that brought me to riding giant waves that I thought, well, if I ride the biggest waves in the world and I ride bigger waves than anybody else has ever ridden. And in most of the waves I ride, no one wants to ride. That kind of puts me in a unique position. Yeah. It's your own. <laughs> that puts me like, you know, and, it, and I mean, it's the, I always love the term, uh, the victory through attrition. Through attrition. What's yeah. that? What do you mean? The by last that? guy standing mm. that at the end, you don't even need to be any good. Right. If you're the last guy and everybody else is laid out, sure. You know, yeah, in yeah. the 300, yeah. <laughs> when there's right, only right. one guy standing, yeah, right. You're the winner. It's interesting. And through that approach, you can give all your secrets away. You can give all the information away. It's still who's got the most courage. That's right. So you can just be as good as me that's technically. Right. That's right. All the that's information right. you need. That's but right. Are you willing to go above and beyond? That's right. Me. That's right. So what, what and kind of, then it becomes a skill thing. Yeah. So then you add skill to that too. Yes. So that as an added element of, because you know what, there's always some crazy guy that'll do anything stupid too. So then, but then will they survive? <laughs> will they survive? So then, which again, <laughs> that's, part, the that's part of the thing. But again, it's part about the survival thing. Yeah. We're like, yeah, the guy might be able to go higher, but if you go up to a cliff and then the guy jumps higher than you and he He's dies, di <laughs> he doesn't win. Then you still are, you're still, <laughs> you went higher, right? Yeah, so, right? So again, it has to do with, you wow. know, it has to do with, you have to still have, you can't have the element of who's the craziest because there's because you got a skill yeah you got to have there has to be and you also have to have understanding mm -hmm. you have to have experience to know where the line is where the or your line. line is yeah where your line is right because you always have somebody that's willing to be a little bit reckless or crazier but then can they do that can they complete year it? in and you out <laughs> yeah. i mean just saying year in and year out right um, a lot of our evolution gets held back because we protect information because it's really about I'm going to try to beat you so if I know something that I think I can beat you with I won't tell you but if my objective is to make you be as good as you can be and I'm going to try to be as good as I can be I will be like you can't believe this try this